England may be a small country, but it is jam-packed with incredible destinations. If you're looking for big skies, long walks along the cliffs, and sandy beaches, Norfolk might be the place for you. If you're ever in Norfolk, here's seven places you must visit to have a swell time. Number seven is Cromer. Cromer in Norfolk is a popular holiday destination for families. The quaint seaside town, which has managed to maintain its appeal throughout the years, offers a delightful beach escape to tourists of all ages. In Cromer, there are hipster cafes and modern restaurants, creating an intriguing mix of the old and new. And for history buffs, the Lifeboat Station and Henry Blog Museum are likely to be of interest and are a great way to learn about the town's past. Cromer's clifftop locations lends itself to some excellent walks, my favorite of which leads up to the lighthouse via Happy Valley. Since it's a short hike, most people shouldn't have any trouble with the terrain. You'll get the best views if you hike just before sunset. Cromer Pier provides the quintessential day out in Norfolk for you to enjoy the great British seaside. The 160-foot tower of St. Peter and Paul, a 14th century church with the largest stained glass windows honoring Cromer's lifeboat crew and the most ornamented RNLI history stands out on the skyline. In addition to a museum named after Henry Blogg, a lifeboat man who served 53 years on Cromer's lifeboats, there are nine blue plaques honoring some of the notable individuals connected with the town. Blogg and his crew helped rescue almost 873 lives, discover more history at the Lifeboat Museum and Cromer Museum. Don't pass up the chance to spot a real-life Banksy if you're an art enthusiast. Banksy began his Great British Spraycation in the summer of 2021 and traveled the Norfolk and Suffolk coastlines. He left several murals behind, including the one above on the seawall in Cromer. Next, you should definitely visit Norwich. Ask people what they think about Norwich, and they'll tell you that Norwich is one of the most beautiful cities in the entire country. Not one, but two cathedrals can be found in this medieval city. Aside from the impressive architecture, there are a lot of independent restaurants and charming cobbled streets to discover. Norwich has a lot to offer from quirky attractions like an underground Norwich tour to a relaxing walk along the River Wensum. Despite being the largest city in East Anglia, Norwich maintains a friendly and community atmosphere. Norwich is unmistakably a university city because it is home to the University of East Anglia. In stark contrast to the ancient elements that date many of the streets, the cool street art gives the city a modern vibe. The market, which is the lifeblood of the city, is renowned for its vibrant and diverse food sales. And don't pass up the chance to patronize some local businesses while you're there and dine in some of the most delicious, reasonably priced food you can find. Number 5. Wells Next to the Sea Wells Next to the Sea is a famous for its picturesque beach huts, like a scene from a summer postcard. Even though this is one of Norfolk's busiest coastal towns, there's still places to find tranquility in the area. The Wells and the Walsingham Light Railway is a must-see for families and anybody who enjoys watching trains. It runs between the town of Walsingham and Wells Next to the Sea. Even though the line barely extends four miles, taking a ride on board is still an enjoyable and interesting way to spend an afternoon. Trains run every day, but close for Norfolk's winter during December, January, and February. The trains are still mostly steam operated, something you won't want to miss. The harbor, which was one of the major ports in eastern England during the Tudor era, is still used by sailing and crabbing boats today. An impressive granary built in 1904 stands watch over the harbor. With a thriving sailing club and a water ski club in town, the harbor, which is protected by salt marshes, is now ideal for sailing and other water-based recreational activities, including crabbing. If you're looking for something to do during your time in Wells, consider going on an alpaca trek. Down the cobblestone streets of Wells with alpacas is one-of-a-kind experience that you'll never want to forget. Whatever you do in the Wells next to the sea, make it a priority stop at French's Fish Shop for a fish supper. After all, what's the point of going to the beach if you don't get some fish and chips? Next, check out the Broads National Park. If you're a wildlife lover, the Broads National Park is something you can't miss. It has more than 125 miles of man-made waterways that showcase some of Norfolk's most beautiful scenery. Renting a boat or a kayak for the day is the best way to take in all of it. Roxham and Coltishall are only two of the lovely towns and villages that Broads pass through. These are both fantastic locations for day trippers to enjoy a beer on a warm day. As well as flaunting some of the most idyllic scenery, the Broads National Park is also home to 25% of the rarest animals and plants in the UK. 
This region is home to bitterns, pike, warblers, herons, and field mice. If you're fortunate, you might even spot an otter. Early in the morning before the canals fill with traffic is the greatest time to see the most elusive species. The kids are sure to love the broads, and for many children, the excitement of motoring down the waterways with ice cream is just too much to take in. Also, boating vacations are affordable and great if you want to spend some more time on the water. Number 3. Thetford The ancient market town of Thetford is steeped in history. It was formerly inhabited by the brutal Aseni tribe, which was led by the formidable female warrior Boudica. Thetford has been inhabited since the Iron Age, and up until the Tudor era, it was one of the biggest and most significant population centers in the nation. Even while the town isn't as popular with tourists as some of the other main attractions in Norfolk, it still draws a respectable amount of visitors. The earthworks of Thetford Castle date back to the Iron Age. Its moat is recognized as a scheduled monument. Don't come expecting a castle though, the moat is all that remains. It appears to be a large, grassy mound. Visits to Thetford Priory will be considered more enjoyable. What is now all that is left of the ruins of the once most significant monasteries that formerly existed in all of East Anglia. The historical site is still fascinating to explore. Everyone is welcome, making it the perfect staycation option for those on a tight budget. Don't pass up the chance to take a tour of the town if you're a dad's army fan. Visitors are led by tour guards around many of Thetford's filming locations before arriving at the dad's army museum. Next, you should visit Holcomb. Holcomb is a 25,000 acre estate on the North Norfolk coast that includes Holcomb Hall, an 18th century Palladian mansion that is home to the Earl of Leicester. And the beach at Holcomb is one of the most pristine and stunning lengths of sand in the nation, and the Holcomb National Nature Reserve is home to numerous endangered species of both plants and animals. The beach at Holcomb boasts a wide expanse of sand and is bordered by attractive pine trees. At extremely high tides, a semicircular basin behind the shoreline quickly fills to create a stunning shallow lagoon. In the closing scenes of the movie Shakespeare in Love, actress Gwyneth Paltrow strolled across the sand at Holcomb during low tide. Over 100 horses visit the beach during the summer as part of the Household Cavalry Mounted Regiment's yearly rural regimental training camp. The Holcomb National Nature Reserve is one of the biggest in the nation. Only a few privately owned estates like Holcomb have received approval as an approved body under Section 35 of the Wildlife and Countryside Act. While Natural England works with Holcomb to manage the beach, the estate is responsible for its own land management. Holcomb National Nature Reserve, 3,706 hectares, stretches from Burnham, Norton to Blakeney. Lastly, we have number one, Hunstanton. Originally, Sunny Honey was a Victorian beach resort. The region has changed over time, but its primary purpose has remained the same. Thousands of domestic and foreign tourists visit the bustling beach town of Hunstanton every year. Hunstanton is known as Sunny Honey for a reason, despite the fact that good weather is never a certainty in England. It receives more sunshine than average because it's the only west-facing seaside resort on the east coast. The town is well known for its striped cliffs, which have long drawn geologists' attention. These red and white cliffs are made from chalk and carstone. It is possible to find fossils in the chalky layers of the cliffs at Hunstanton. And that's it for today. Which other places do you think should have made it on the list? Let us know down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.